So, in the previous lecture we were we, we had just concluded the form for the value function at time n minus 1. Now, what we found was that the, the, uh, the value function at time n minus 1 took a quadratic form with a trailing additional constant. This constant was not present in, in, the, in, the, in the value function at time n. At time n we had a pure quadratic like this. Now we have a trailing constant of this form and but nonetheless the, uh, the, it is still a quadratic function and the, the, uh, the Hessian of that quadratic function that means k n minus 1 here this k n minus 1 is given in this particular form. This, this k n minus 1 is a positive semi definite matrix which, which ends this is k n minus 1 is positive semi definite which means j n minus 1 of x n minus 1 is a convex is convex in in x n minus 1. This is what we we have concluded. So, now let us let us let us take take a step back and think what we have done. We started off at with time with this terminal condition here that j n my j n is equal to the terminal cause. We then went to time t equal to n minus 1 and we applied the dynamic programming equation to find find j n minus 1 of x n minus 1. Okay. Now, j n was assumed to be a convex convex and quadratic j and then from there we got that j n minus 1 is also a con is also convex and quadratic. Now, imagine what would happen if we get that if we if we did this now for t equal to suppose we did this now for t equal to n minus 2. At t equal to n minus 2, we would again have we would be again attempting to write j n minus 2 of x n minus 2. This would be the minimum over u n minus 2. Now, again the expect we would have an expectation of x n minus 2 transpose q n minus 2 x n minus 2 plus u n minus 2 transpose r n minus 2 u n minus 2 plus plus now the co, uh, the the cost to go at time n minus uh, uh, for time n minus 2 so that is j n minus at time n minus 1 so that would be j n minus 1 but j n minus 1 would have to be expressed as a function of x n minus 2 and that would would give us a n minus 2 x n minus 2 plus b n minus 2 u n minus 2 plus w n minus 2. Notice the form that we have, we have here. This here is has bears striking similarity with, with the expression that we have out here out in when we wrote out j n minus 1. So, here j n here was a was convex and quadratic. On the other hand now j n minus 1 here is convex and quadratic and it has been expressed as a linear function of x n minus 1, u n minus 1 and w n x n minus 2, u n minus 2 and w n minus 2. Here it was j n which was convex and quadratic and it was being expressed as a linear function of x n minus 1, u n minus 1 and w n minus 1. So, once so we have this here is a convex quadratic these two terms were also convex and quadratic just like these two terms were convex and quadratic. So, because of the quadratic nature of the problem we were we 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 realized that the optimal optimal u can be found convex and quadratic nature of 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 this b of this as a function of u we realize that the optimal u can be found by differentiating and putting the gradient with respect to u n minus 1 equal to 0 and that because again of the because of the quad convex and quadratic nature uh, because of the quadratic nature of the problem gave us that u n minus 1 star is a linear function of x n minus 1. So, now notice that these structural conclusions will continue to hold even in even when we do this at t equal to n minus 2. In other words, if we now 
you know take this uh, expand out this particular expression j n minus 1 we would again get terms like these terms that do not depend on w, w n minus uh, that, that do not depend on w n minus 2 at all. Then we would get a term like this which is linear in w n minus 2 but whose expectation will be 0 because w n minus 2 is also 0 mean. We would get a quadratic term in w n minus 2 which does not depend on anything uh, either u n minus 1 or x n minus 1. So, what we would be left with therefore is would be a, a quadratic expression in u n minus 2. When we minimize that quad and that uh, expression would also be convex uh, uh, convex and it would be convex in addition to being quadratic and again we would be we would be able to put that gradient with respect to u n minus 2 equal to 0 and then again conclude that u n minus 2 has to be a, the optimal u n minus 2 u n minus 2 star we would conclude from here that u n minus 2 star is l n minus 2 times x n minus 2. In other words, all the conclusions that that uh, that we uh, derived from at time n minus 1 will continue to hold even at time n minus 2. From here then we will be able to do the same for time n minus 3 as well. In other words, we this and then therefore at n minus 4 and so on. In other words, we will get for all times t, for all, all t, we would get that mu star t of xt is equal to lt times xt. This is what we would get. And what would be this lt? Well, this lt is something that we can calculate recursively. The this L at time L at time t is equal to negative negative of B t transpose k t plus 1 B t plus R t the whole inverse B t transpose k t plus 1 A t. And these these k's also can be computed have to be computed recursively. The k's let me write this on the next page. The the k at time n is simply q n itself. The k at any other time t can be written as a t transpose k t plus one minus k t plus one b t times B t transpose K t plus 1 B t plus R t the whole inverse B t transpose K t plus 1 times A t plus Q t and the cost the, the optimal cost is actually given in this form. Remember this is nothing but the last step of the d dynamic programming equation that is j0 of x0 that is equal to x0 transpose k0 x0 plus summation uh, write this as t equal to 0 to n minus 1 the expectation of wt transpose k t plus 1 w t. This here is uh, is the solution of this problem. So, the optimal policy the optimal policy takes this particular form the optimal policy is actually linear in us in the state the gain that we apply on this this is uh, this is called uh, this here is called the Kalman gain. The optimal policy is linear in the state. The, the gain that you need to apply can be computed recursively. So, these give you 
recursive equations to compute the gain. The key equation here in that is this one, this is what is called the Riccati equation. The key, this is the key equation once you, you, you need to compute this backwards in time you start it off seed it with k n as, uh, as q n and then you work for work backwards in time to compute, the, uh, compute this for all k. Using that one can compute, compute the L's that the, uh, the, gain, the, uh, the Kalman gains and then using the Kalman gain we have the optimal policy. Okay. So, the optimal policy is, line, is linear in the state the cost the optimal cost actually can be computed also from this from the from the from these matrices that we get from uh, from from the riccati equation the optimal cost has takes this form that it is quadratic in the initial state it's x0 transpose k0 x0 so it is a quadratic function of the initial state plus a term that is that that depends on the variance of the noise Remember, noise was assumed to have uh, was assumed to have zero mean, but and and finite variance. So this term only this term is finite when the variance is finite. So it's some addition. This this is an additional cost that you end up having in addition to x zero k zero, x zero transpose k zero x zero. Now here's here are some things you can note in addition to this structural result. So, the reason we have been able to uh, solve for this in closed form is because of this beautiful coincidence between the linear dynamics of the problem and the quadratic nature of the cost. The linear dynamics and quadratic uh, cost help allow us to compute the optimal policy as a linear function of the state. The optimal action is, is just a matrix times the state equation is times the state at that time. This then propagates from once one time step to the other. So, the, op the value function at the terminal uh, condition is quadratic that gives us the value function at any intermediate times is also quadratic and, and moreover convex and quadratic and therefore, we get that the optimal cost can be optimal uh, action can be computed by uh, optimal policy is linear and then finally, we get that the optimal cost is also quadratic function of the initial state. In addition to this, the here is one other thing to remember notice. So, if you if you take a look at this uh, this policy, this policy here is given is given by is is linear of course, but notice how L t is actually computed. L t is computed from B t, A t, R t, and K and K t's. K t's themselves are computed recursively from this equation here. This is where we get the K t's from. So kt is themselves they depend only on q's on the q's uh, the qt's the at's bt's and rt's so in other words does it the the computation of kt's only as only requires us uh, does so the computation of the kt uh, does not depend on the variance of the noise so the entire optimal policy here is actually the same regardless of whether there was noise in the system or not. If there was no noise in the system, then in that case the variance of the of the noise would be 0 and this expectation here would be 0. But the optimal, so the cost depends on the on whether there is noise in the system or not. But the optimal policy does not depend on the noise. So, regardless of whether there was no, there is noise in the system whether the system was noisy or not noisy, whether the system dynamics evolved in with, with, uh, with this, uh, you know in a noisy fashion or, or in a noiseless fashion, the optimal policy is still the same and the optimal policy is still linear in the state and op what one has to apply is still the Kalman gain. So, this optimal policy is the, it is a remarkable fact in, in, in linear quadratic control problems that the optimal policy is is the same for the pro for the problem with noise and without noise okay so let me note this down here the optimal policy for the noiseless problem is equal to 
optimal policy of the deterministic problem. So, these two are the, the optimal policy is the same for, no, for the noisy and the noiseless problem. So, where does noise appear? Well, noise appears only in, in, in the cost it appears in this quadratic fashion in this cost. So, what does this mean? This means that the, the optimal cost that you incur when, when your problem has when the system dynamics have noise is the equal to the optimal cost that you would incur when you did not have noise plus another offset or another an additional term that additional offset is caused because of the noise in the system. So, what you do what happens is that you pick up this additional uh, additional term uh, that is that uh, at every at every time step which is caused basically because because the origin because your system is actually noisy. If that noise was not there then then uh, then what you the optimal policy that you would apply would still be the same uh, uh, and what the the optimal cost that you would get would be just this term x 0 transpose k 0 x 0 as a function of the initial state x0. Okay. So, notice another, so let us notice one more other thing. So, notice that the optimal cost depends on the variance of the noise. Okay. The optimal cost here depends on the variance of the noise. So, it depends on this uh, the optimal cost here the optimal policy does not depend on anything about the noise just uh, only thing we have assumed is that it has 0 mean. So, it may be noisy it may not be noisy. But the optimal cost here depends on the variance of the noise. In other words, it, de it depends only on the first two moments. It does not actually matter what, uh, what the precise distribution is. So, the cost is the same for all uh, regard the, the cost would be the same once the first two moments are of the noise are the same. So, you can take two different uh, sets of disturbances that match in, the, in their first two moments and the optimal cost would remain the same. This is again an, uh, an, a remarkable fact uh, of, of linear quadratic and a remarkable coincidence of the linear quadratic uh, linear, linear, pro, uh, linear systems with quadratic cost problem. That the not only does one not need to know anything about uh, uh, not only does one not, uh, uh, not only does the deterministic and the stochastic problem have the same optimal policy the optimal policy uh, the, the optimal cost is also invariant over uh, over distributions so long as the distributions agree in the in the first two moments. So, what does this basically tell us? This tells us that you can this suggests let me say that an approach to stochastic control problems could be the following. One could potentially just look at the problem by by replacing all the noise in the system by the mean of that noise. So, you look at your system dynamics as if the, the noise was replaced by its mean in this case the mean is 0. So, in other words the noise is 0. So, there is no noise in the system and you solve for that would then give us a deterministic system. Okay. So, you take this noisy system replace all the noise in it by its mean that would give you a deterministic system. Then from that deterministic system you try to find uh, an uh, you find an optimal policy for the for the resulting deterministic problem. And then you you find that well lo and behold that policy is actually optimal for the original problem right. So, this this here is the flow let me write this again for you. So, you take a noisy problem. replace noise by its mean this gives us a deterministic we get a deterministic problem as a result of this deterministic problem dynamic uh, programming problem find optimal policy. So, here you apply any deterministic control technique you find an optimal policy and this here completes the loop policy 
is optimal for noisy problem. So, what we have just discovered in the in the uh, in the above problem in the above linear problem with linear systems with quadratic cost is that this loop is true for the above problem. Okay, this uh, uh, this uh, it is uh, it is uh, it's, uh, this suggests that this this is actually true for the above problem. Now, why is this? Uh, uh, so, so this the this suggests that this uh, uh, now what we have this is true, what we have found is that this is true for the above problem. Now what this suggests is that this this may be true more generally. So this here is often known by a principle it is what is called the certainty equivalence principle. So, whenever one can one has this particular property that you can take a noisy problem, replace the noise by its mean, solve the deterministic problem, get the optimal solution and then that turn solution also turns out to be optimal for the noisy problem that is what we then we say that certainty equivalence holds. But now it is remarkable that certainty equivalence basically holds for the lin for linear systems with quadratic cost in the way we have defined. Now, what this has suggested is that this pro this may be more generally true. Okay, this has suggested that prob probably maybe you can solve all stochastic control problems with this particular technique by just simply replacing noise by their mean and then finding their optimal policy, finding the optimal policy by looking at the uh, at the corresponding deterministic problem. In other words, it has been tempted to con to to look for uh, to to conjecture that certainty equivalence holds more generally in across across the board in all sorts of problems. Unfortunately, this is not true. In fact, the very first lecture of our of our course we realized that risk plays an important role and in and the way the, the way risk uh, manifests in stochastic control problems is through higher moments of the noise. One cannot simply replace noise by its mean and then get an and, and look at the uh, and come and, and arrive at an answer by just simply looking at the mean of the noise. So, the mean does not adequately capture everything about 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 the about the random variable in question when we are looking at when we have a stochastic decision problem. Nonetheless, this is something that people have continued to look for they will continue to look for when uh, the when certainty equivalence holds and uh, that that is a continues to be an ongoing uh, ongoing effort in research. But I must warn you that this particular coincidence should not be stretched too far. This coincidence works in this particular setting because, because of you know uh, because of the excellent alignment between the nature of the, the shape of the cost function, the nature of the dynamics and so on. Okay. It does not the uh, certainty equivalence does not hold more generally across all problems. Having said that it has the, the linear systems with quadratic costs have wide number of wide, uh, wide applicability in industry and as a result of that the certainty equivalence principle has, 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 become, ex uh, has become extremely widely applied in a lot of industrial problems.